Hey YouTube, uh, I recently bought an MMU on MMU 2S on eBay and uh, I'm glad I did. Um, it's working 100% fail safe um, without a filament buffer. I'm not even sure why there needs to be a filament buffer to be honest. Um, I just came up with this design. It's actually a coat hanger from a dry cleaning place. I just bend it around like this with two angles and these angles are re really important it doesn't have to be super accurate like within a few millimeters on each side and you can always uh, adjust them a little bit but um, and this design will basically use the filament roll as a buffer and it's totally fine. I did like hundreds and hundreds of filament changed already with new rolls and uh, it's even no problem. All of the rolls already have empty. Uh, Peru cement works even better since it's wound so good and uh, it's not an issue either that the roll will come loose at all. When you see uh, I printed with this for hundreds and changes already and uh, the second layer underneath is still totally fine so it's it has no effect on the roll at all if you don't have a buffer and uh, so how does it work um, we'll show you in a second as soon as we uh, have a layer change I also got rid of the the cutting blade because uh, the, the problem is actually not uh, in the MMU uh, the problem why you have load failures uh, is because of the drive gear flattens your uh, filament out when it when it pulls it out uh, since it's a little bit soft and it flattens the tip so when it tries to load it again on the next load it won't go into the heat break because the heat Brake has just a very tiny tolerance. Okay, here's the f filament uh, change, and I can show you how it works without a buffer. <clears throat> All right, now it's just doing the cooling move and it's unloading. And let's see what happens up here. See how the filament walks up that angle, and then the the first few layers of filament will just uh, relax naturally, and uh, it's totally fine. And they just hang down like this, and the second roll just gets pulled tight again because it will pull um, the filament back in, and it's totally fine again as the roll. And uh, I did hundreds of filament changes for hours. I had not one failure. Um, and it works great. So hopefully that will help anybody. But uh, what else? Oh, yeah, just to get back to the uh, heat break, what I said earlier. you uh, The heat break has such a tight tolerance. When you try to load the new filament into the heat break, and it is that little flattened uh, part of it, it won't be able to push past the top of the heat break although it makes it all the way down um, but you will have a load failure because the tolerance is too uh, it's too small so what you, what I did is I just took the heat break out um, and widened I unscrewed the heat break to the and widened with a Dremel tool the very top of it so these uh, well, let me see if I have a tip. Let me see if I have so these flattened tips right here. Oh, you can see it right here. These flattened tips um, can go past it, and it just needs you just need to uh, widen the heat break um, just the very top, like a little cone shape with a Dremel tool or a little uh, drill. And so it pushes it in because the heat break is already hot on the top. It's enough 
heat still on the top of the heat break to flatten that little area back out and and push it in all the all the time and you have zero loading failures and it doesn't change anything to the pressure behavior of the tip at all since it's the very top of the heat break only so uh, you basically can get rid of the blade and the whole cutting mechanism is like obsolete because you, I, I, it's literally impossible to have a failure now like I tried like with uh, crazy filament already like which uh, which has tolerances I mean this is not perushamin but you can print any filament then like I didn't have any load failure so yeah, that's it hope helps out anyone take care bye